We're ready. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, call to order. Let's say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Council Member Yaffe. He's on mute. Yaffe, you're muted. <laughs> No, Councilmember <laughs> Council Member Tricoche? Here. Councilmember Salver? Present. Councilmember Reed? Here. Councilmember Leonard? Here. Vice Mayor Fuller? Here. Mayor Bruder? Here. Thank you. Okay. We have um, any requests for withdrawals, deferments, and future agenda items, please? Got a future yes. agenda item. Okay, go ahead, Kelly. Um, I got a call just a few days ago, too late to ask for this agenda, but um, the business district, some of the landlords are still in a little bit of post COVID or current COVID distress. So, um, so um, they will be asking for some kind of assistance, you know, something creative or um, one example of a way we could help them is maybe, for example, on Lincoln Road, they've initiated what's called a pop-up. I don't know if you read about it in the Miami Herald, but they're doing like these little quick starter temporary businesses and the city is yielding on some of the requirements. So I would just ask of all of you that maybe, you know, before the next meeting, we all kind of brainstorm, maybe talk to some of the landlords, business owners, and see what kind of creative things we can do. I've spoken to the manager about it, and so she's also putting her thinking cap on. But um, I think this problem is, is really going to be ongoing, even once the restrictions are loosened up. And uh, I, I think we could all put our heads together and come up with something creative. So I hope you all uh, will go along and support that. Okay, that's great. So, uh, Josh. I, shall, I want to pull number six because I want to make a couple changes before we pass it. Hopefully okay. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Anybody else has? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to pull number seven while we're pulling things. So we're going to pull, pull number six and number seven, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, does anybody have anything else that they would like to add to next month's agenda or... Excuse me, Mayor, I believe item 50, there's a, uh, we have comment on that, so I'm not sure if that's going to be pulled or not. We need to discuss it. Yeah, let me, let me actually, if, if I can, if I can refer to that, you know, just so everything, I, I actually do think we should defer it because there are some number 15, but I wanted to discuss one thing about it that I wanted to be, uh, to have uh, looked at. I can do that with the town manager or we can discuss in, in general. Either way is fine, but I don't want to have any vote on it tonight. I, I agree with you on that, and I have some questions on that, so I don't know how everyone thinks the best way to do that is, if it's better that we take our questions to the manager. I think we should, team. personally, I think we should take your questions to the manager, have a discussion with her, and then let her, in her manage, management report, bring it back to us, because that thing is like a Bible. It is amazing, Maria. It helps us tremendously. At least it helps me um, tremendously. Does anybody have any problem with that? If anybody has any questions about numbers 15, they can talk to the manager and we will bring it back next month. Is, is, there, any, is there any urgency on that? Do we maybe have another meeting or um, should we, we can. Meet, can we wait a month, Ms. Um, Ms. Manager? It's supposed to be... Um, authorized as of October 1st. They approved it uh, on September 30th, so I would have to go back to them and let them know it's being delayed. But right now we're operating without it, a contract. Yeah, well, we've done that in the past. We've yeah, done exactly. before, unfortunately, without it. So we need to get it right. I, you know, I'd rather do it right. And if we need to go till November and everybody has their discussions, with the manager and get it done and get it done correctly and satisfactory to everybody. Is that okay with everybody? And we agree that it'll be retroactive. 
Correct. The same retroactive. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay, Kelly? To Kelly's yeah. point, if we can, if we need to meet sooner or we can meet sooner, I'm fine with joining an earlier meeting if that's something that we need to do. Exactly. Okay. It's just a matter of individual. We, I think we all have, I'm going to assume different things, maybe the same, who knows, but we have comments that we all want to make to the manager. Isaac, are you okay with that? I, I, I yeah, I support um, deferring it until everybody, until which time everyone has their questions answered sufficiently. I don't support having a special meeting for it. I think it should be done at our monthly meeting. And one of the things that you preempted me saying, talking, um, actually congratulating Maria on the awesome manager's report. I, I really wanted to comment on that um, and how useful it was, how you know, great it is. It's like an executive uh, summary. Basically the whole meeting is, is, is it's summarized for you. And it's, uh, you know, it was a really good tool. You know, it helps you know, get an understanding for us uh, as to each and every uh, topic. And um, that was really a handy tool. And I want to I, I want to thank you for that, Maria. You're welcome. And I just want to concur with that, and also, Maria, just officially welcome you uh, to Bay Harbor Island since this is your first council meeting. Uh, thank you. Glad you're here. Ditto. Yep. Ditto. 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 Great. Okay, so we are we are deferring number fifteen, and we are we are pulling number six and number seven. Correct, everybody. Correct. Okay, so let's move on to town manager's report. A couple of things I just wanted to note, uh, the Broad Causeway project, we're still working on that. There's a design issue they're trying to work out. We're hoping it'll be done soon. They can finish the one side that they started on and then they can start the new side, but they do need to figure out a, a small design issue and they're right now um, figuring, they're right now designing the, the fix right now. So hopefully that'll be done soon. Our public works director is trying hard to really get them to speed it up so we can uh, finish the project. The other thing I wanted to know is um, we have some special events coming up. I just wanted to get your feedback. Uh, you have something for Halloween coming up. It's supposed to be outdoor movie and passing out treats to people. You're going to have people registering there. I'm just a little concerned given uh, with COVID. Is that is that what we want to do or perhaps we want to scale that down? We are doing a pumpkin, pumpkin carving, it's all gonna be virtual and we can get prizes virtual, but um, there is the in-person event where people will be coming to the park and on the street. So I just wanna make sure you're aware of that, make sure we're okay with that on October 31st. We also have the Veterans Day special event. We're supposed to, historically, you've also given food out there as well. And we have big tents uh, and then um, outdoor concerts. I think we're gonna push them to the December, the December, uh, first Saturday in December versus doing that in November. Just wanna get your feedback on that. Josh. If, if I may, I, I think at this point, I think we've all authorized these events, but I think what we need to be able to do is just rely on the town manager to make a determination on her own as to each and every one, whether or not it's appropriate, whether it's not. Uh, and I think that's the best way to go forward because for us to cancel events, you know, two, three months from now, while we still don't know anything, um, you know, may not make sense, but at the time you may decide, uh, Maria, that it is appropriate to cancel it. And I have full faith in your ability to make that decision at that time. Um, okay. And the other, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, church by the sea and the non-agenda items. If you take a look at that, they're asking to use up some of our, uh, close up the, the sidewalk for a couple of months on 96th street. And, um, they also wanted to use up East Bay Harbor Drive and, and uh, 95th Street. So I wanted to highlight that to you, their request. I didn't feel comfortable saying, yes, go ahead and close up our sidewalk without you knowing about that. They have offered to pay for a um, crossing guard on 95th and East Bay Harbor Drive. Um, and then the closure on 96th Street would be for two months, beginning November 1st. I am not comfortable with that, and I don't think that's a good idea. On top of that, I think that they need to come back to us and have a conversation with us about everything that they are doing and um, what they're planning on doing, because what they said they were going to do, I'm not necessarily sure that that's what they're, they're doing. I want them to reiterate to us what it is that they're doing, and if they're keeping what they said, having the um, retail on the bottom floor, I want to make sure that, that what they had said to us from the beginning 
is really what they're in. And I am not comfortable with our citizens having to cross the street for two months. I'm, um, I'm just not comfortable with that at all. Kelly, and then I'll go was, down the road. When, um, when the manager briefed me on this, I was wondering if they can do like you see in a lot of big cities where they cover the portion of the sidewalk very substantially with the scaffolding and then people can still walk under and be on the sidewalk, but it's safe. And of course it has to meet all their regulations, OSHA, et cetera. So I think that might be an alternative. It might be more expensive, but if that you know meets the satisfaction of our building department, I'd like to see something like that. Yeah, like what they, like what they do in New York, you know? Yes. Yes. Correct. They're building to the lot line, so they're probably going to have to go somewhat into the sidewalk. Their building will be right on the lot lines. I asked that question. They don't have to have setback. Okay, wait, Josh, please. The other thing is, no, I, I like what Kelly was saying, but at the same time, also one thing is, I, I can't believe that it's only going to be two months. Um, that's the thing that bothers me is that we're talking about November and December, which are the holidays. Um, everybody's already being delayed with everything with COVID, but you know, this is one of those things that seems to be in the heart of the season, if, if there is a season this year, but um, that we're looking at November and December, and I have no doubt that we're going to come to January, they're going to say that due to the holidays, it's been delayed, and now we're into January, February, and March. So if there is some agreement put together, it has to have an absolute set end date, um, because I just don't want a floating time period past the two months. Yeah, two months, two months is code for a year and a half. Exactly. <laughs> I agree with those comments and I'm opposed to closing Bob. the sidewalk in 96. Okay, so Bob is with me. We're opposed to closing the sidewalk. And I still would like them to come back and just have a conversation and they can give us an overview again about what it is they're doing. Is that a, an agreement with the council? Yes. Right, the next council meeting needs a yes, representative. I, right, I yes, would like a representative. I agree. I agree. I just and I also would like if the clerk can please pull out what it is they said they were going to do. I remember it, but I would like for those minutes to be pulled so that we have an accurate um, Alba, so we can have an accurate, you know, of what they said they were going to do. Sure. Okay. 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 Is that is yeah, that yeah. On, on 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 the church? You know, I, I have one comment on the church. One of the things that, that I, I thought that they were really going to do that they didn't do, now they didn't necessarily commit to it, but they, but they, they did have interest in doing it. It was my understanding they were going to make it happen, was to be making the project a sustainable building. And, and to my displeasure, I found out that they have, their project is not, um, not a sustainable project. It's not a green project. And, you know, it, it's, it's very uh, disappointing that we're having, you know, new projects in the town. They want concessions from the town, but yet, you know, it's, it, you know, this council has made sustainability a major issue that we support and it's disheartening that they don't support it. And I, I would like to see that project, if they can make it sustainable, that they, they should, you know, that's, that's well, you very know important for the town. Right. So, I'm assuming that the invitation will be accepted by them, and then you can have that I, that direct conversation with them and see how far you get with them. Anybody else have any questions regarding Church by the Sea? Okay, uh, Manager. Any other? Um, the only other thing is the plan commission, the plan and zoning uh, board met when they requested their future meeting to be at six p.m. and they really hope it can be virtual. They're very versus um, in person. Okay, that's fine. Anything else, Maria, or we're done? Okay, town manager, I mean, town attorney, your report, please. Yes, Mayor. Uh, two things. Uh, one is our request for a closed meeting pursuant to uh, Florida statutes to discuss the charge of discrimination and the offer of settlement provided in connection therewith. Uh, I think Alba has established a date in time, can you please announce that? Uh, October 19th, which is next Monday at 5 p.m. Okay. Anything and at that else? meeting, uh, uh, so th that's it. We're just announcing that shade meeting then for next Monday at uh, 5 p.m. The attendants will be the attorneys on the matter together with the council and the clerk or the assistant clerk. Okay. I will uh, not be attending, Frank. I'm, I would only attend the public meeting and then- Correct. 
Close Correct. To. Okay. Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, I had a second item as well, which is the uh, the virtual meetings uh, using communication media technology. As you know, during the state of emergency, the mayor, the governor, has allowed us to continue with virtual meetings through uh, November first. Um, we, uh, I provided a memo to the council, uh, basically giving two options. One, the safest uh, of the two options is doing the hybrid system where you have the four, you know, a quorum in the town council chambers with the public and the rest of the council. Uh, virtual. Uh, we believe that's uh, um, uh, fully um, compliant with the law as it exists and uh, uh, would not be an issue uh, to be challenged. Or alternatively, and it's not as safe, however, I do believe that the courts will ultimately s sustain uh, the municipalities, and there are several now, that have decided that they're going to continue with complete uh, uh, virtual meetings. So I wanted to uh, find out the direction that the council would like to proceed so I can provide you with at the next uh, town council meeting an ordinance and resolution. Okay, Josh, I see yeah, you. Uh, and then Bob, you'll go next. I was looking at this and I, I, ha I have another solution I wanna offer. And I think I already spoke to you, Frank. I think I know I spoke to Maria about this. Um, the, the expiration is November 1st. Um, we do not have a December meeting. What I'd like to propose is that we actually have our November meeting on, no, on October 30th. Um, and that way we're still within the current, or, or the current ordinance, current regulation by the governor. Um, we don't have one in December and that would allow us to wait until January before deciding whether or not we wanna try the hybrid or try the, uh, the completely remote or for all we know, the governor may reverse his stance by January. But this gives us the ability to not have to worry about being questioned and at the same time, not in any way put anybody at, at risk. Um, I, I don't have an issue with Josh's suggestion if that's you know the sense of the council. Um, Frank, you may have answered my question that if we were to proceed um, under the second option, we would need to adopt an ordinance, I think, as I think your memo indicates. So I didn't know whether we needed to do that Obviously, I think prior to the next meeting, if we were going to try to go, you know, stay virtual after November 1st, we would have to adopt an ordinance before the next council meeting. Is that correct? That's correct. So at the um, October, say, 30th meeting, we would have to do uh, that. What I was actually thinking about doing, and I think this would probably split the difference and, and also be sustainable. Uh, to state that, um, that one, we have the option of doing it in the hybrid method. And, and secondly, if authorized by law to go completely virtual, uh, or if there's a different state of emergency that would require um, or that would prohibit us from, from gathering. For example, you know, we could have a, a hurricane that comes through and no one will be here. Everyone will evacuate and therefore maybe we'll all have to meet in the same type of, of mechanism if we're all in, I don't know, you know, you name the state. Uh, so there may be instances where we would need that anyway. So perhaps what I think I may do is provide you with a, an ordinance that says during state of emergencies, uh, when we're physically able to be there or at the election of the council, maybe we uh, incorporate the hybrid system, but in instances which we are not unable to or unwilling to or, un, or prohibited from, we can meet virtually. I mean, I could see an instance where if we're in the Gulf states right now, uh, specifically in certain municipalities in Louisiana, I mean, they're not, they're not able to be there. There's may not be a much of a town left. So I can, I can envision certain instances where we might want to cover all our bases now because we don't have any, mechanism to have virtual meetings. I think it's a good Other idea than, to have the ordinance prepared for the for the next meeting so that we can adopt it even if we you know decide to use the hybrid method rather than the complete virtual method. It's a good well thing. let me ask the rest of the council. Oh go ahead Kelly. No Elizabeth had her hand up too. Oh yeah. sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry you can go Kelly. Well I was gonna say that um I'm flexible. I can meet on the 30th that's a good alternative. Um 
I'm not so comfortable with all seven of us. You know, we'd have to at least space out, wear masks. Would that mean that uh, we'd have an audience? Would the public be allowed to come in? Um, and then the other thing is, I think this should be our last 5 p.m. meeting. I think we need to start moving to at least 6 p.m. because people are working, even if they're at home, they need that time to transition to see us. So I think we should start bumping it up as well, like the PNZ to at least six, but I'm very flexible on uh, all of the different uh, options, but I prefer you know, the least contact options, lower contact. So 6 p.m. least contact, correct? Yes. Perfect. All right, Elizabeth. I, I apologize. I didn't see I you. I agree with you on the time, Kelly. I, I'm fine with going back to even seven, which is what we used to have as our start time. And I think that that makes sense. It lets people come home. They can, you know, do, take care of the kids, do the homework, and then, you know, move on. So I'm definitely in favor of that. Um, in terms of the options, I, I like both options, but I agree with Frank that um, you know, having all of this in place just to cover our, our tissues in the long term makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to put my two cents in. I also think six o'clock or seven o'clock, or we can start at six, see how it goes. If not, we can move bump it to seven. I think that's a better hour for a lot of people so that we can get more participation. Maybe we'll even get more than we usually do because it's at home and they don't have to go out. I am not comfortable right now. I have my own issues um going into town hall and being with people that i'm sure have social distance but for me it's a no i i i'm not comfortable with it for my own reasons and so i would either prefer um that we do it sometime the last week of november you know i mean of october i can do the 28th um but you know and i do believe we need to get some something frank on the books for us, Josh. One thing, I mean, I, I, you know, if we do decide to do it on the 30th, I mean, I first, I agree the six or seven o'clock time period on, from now on works, but if we do it on the 30th, I would say that should be an exception um, because it is Shabbat. I want Isaac to obviously not feel, you know, as if he can't appear. Um, so I think we should move that one earlier if we do it on the 30th. Well, how, could we do it on, the, I, I can't do it on the 29th or 30th. I have a procedure. Can we do it on the 28th? Is, does anybody have it's a problem the, with it? everyone else. Is that okay, Isaac, with you on the twenty eighth? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have a problem at all with that. Okay, that's fine. The twenty eighth. Yep. Twenty eighth. So then we can do that at six or seven because it's the twenty eighth. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have to worry about this until January. Well, Kelly? also keep in mind. Um, Wait one second, Kelly. Is the twenty eighth okay with you? Yeah. It, it would be as long as uh, the clerk has enough time to notice the change. Is that a problem or? Abba? We have enough time. I mean, the okay, only, so only thing is I need a consensus whether it's 6 or 7 p.m. Like, you want to split the baby and do 6.30? What has <laughs> here? That's fine. You want it to 6 p.m. is fine? Let's try 6 okay. and see. If it doesn't work, we'll move to 7. That's fine with me. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. I'm okay. um, yes. Yes. So, yes. Is that from the emergency ordinance? Um, to Frank. Yeah, Frank, okay. is that an emergency ordinance to change no, our meeting? No, it is not. No. Okay. So, Alma, all you need, need to do is notify everybody who's going to be on the 28th, which is a Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Okay. okay. Yeah. Also, keep in mind that, you know, the, the charter... Um, requires us to meet uh, no less than 10 times in a fiscal year. So as long, I, I, I think we'll be okay, but I, I think yeah. we should just check and make sure that we comply with that. Because if you're going to be having the meeting in October and not November, we have to keep track next fiscal year, um, you know, that, that we still get, get it covered. And I think we'll be okay. Um, you know, but if we start missing times where we have to add up to, to get that 10 meetings in, in a fiscal year, because that's what the charter says. Believe me, we've had so many meetings, emergency <laughs> meetings and extra meetings. I think no, we're but, covered. I get it. I get it. I'm just being No, I see. understand that, but, but our October goes into the next fiscal year. So the reason why I'm mentioning it now is because whether you have the meeting in October or November, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It's it's when you start missing meetings, and if we don't if we don't have um, if we start missing meetings, 
then we're going to have a problem. That's why. Okay, we might. Okay, well, if we need a meeting in December, then we'll do a meeting in December. I mean, we'll figure it out. No, okay. that's, that's okay. Yeah. Perfect. Mayor, okay. We, Mayor. Yes. Before we go forward, I, I just saw a news flash. Um, this is for the census. If anybody hasn't completed the census, do it real quickly because the United States Supreme Court just granted the Trump administration's, uh, I guess, motion to um, shut it down um, early. So although we thought it was going to be able to go on until October 31st, now it looks like it might end at any time. So if anyone out there has not completed it, please do it. It only takes about 10 minutes and it would be beneficial to the town. Okay. So... Now going on to council reports. Um, anybody or no, I'll go first. Okay, well, let me just talk about the school for a second. I went with um, our manager and regime to the school to work out the issues that we had at the school regarding after school program, <clears throat> the use of the fields, the basketball courts, and what we, what we let the um, principal know is that we're planning on using everything, seven days a week, um, after school and on weekends. And regime is diligently working to put in some programs on the weekends for children. So um, if anybody is looking for after school programs, or weekend programs, please, you know, either call or look at the website in the future for those activities. And this weekend, we will have the parks and basketball courts open. Um, there was an issue with some keys with the police, but they've been notified, right, um, Maria? They, they know that they're supposed to open those parks this weekend, correct? Yes, we will be open this weekend. We've worked, we're working out the details of getting the right key. There were some issues with the uh, key and one of the gates, but they're working those out. Right. So I've been assured that they were. Perfect. Were okay, thank you so much, Kelly. Yep, um, first I wanna say um, welcome to our new manager and thank you for a very exciting first couple of weeks. I said to her, uh, you've had a great month. She said, it's only been two weeks, but it feels like a month. She's uh, <laughs> kind of had a trial, a trial by fire. She didn't go running. <laughs> yeah, she hit the ground running for sure. And uh, like everyone who spoke earlier, I'm quite impressed with the synopsis report that she prepared for us, the executive summary. It, I don't think anyone asked for it. She just did it on her own. And it was a lot of effort and a lot of work and it is very much appreciated. Um, of course, you know, we had a, a, a shooting in our town, in our jurisdiction, and that big crime scene uh, required the use of our PIO consultant. And uh, she also spoke on camera and did a very good job. And I thought she, you know, she handled all of that very well, very happy. And then over the weekend, unfortunately, our Marine unit was involved in, uh, an assist at the sandbar and, and which uh, he had to transport. He was the first one there, transported um, the victim who did not survive. But, uh, you know, at least at least we were out there on the holiday weekend and um, I'm happy for that. So thank you to the Marine officer who assisted there and uh, everything else looks really good. I think, um, like I said before, kudos to everybody participating. This isn't easy. So, um, you know, I think we're doing a very good job under the virtual circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. So let's move yeah, on. Yes, I, I have a slide, actually. Oh, Jordan, go ahead. Sorry, yeah. I didn't see you. So, yeah, um, first, first uh, welcome, sure, first welcome to Maria. Um, second, um, I also want to say congratulations to uh, Officer Brilliant to coming back for third year as our school SRO. Um, I just want to give the council um, some notice that uh, we're going to be having some transportation items in regards to uh, ride sharing that's going to be coming up. In fact, I, I believe probably in the next meeting we'll probably have an item related to that in regards to our $450,000 grant. Um, and also, I'll be speaking at the next county commission uh, committee meeting on Thursday in regards to um, our, to be honest, uh, our, our um, 
regional transportation needs. Um, you know, one of the things that's that's going on right now is this uh, uh, Bright Line project on the FEC railway, and um, they're going to be discussing uh, what actual stops are going to be uh, built on on the railway. And uh, we passed uh, a resolution uh, supporting. Um, you know, transportation and, and this very project several years ago. And I'll be speaking uh, on behalf of, um, uh, well, at least for myself, uh, my support for having a stop as close to the broad causeway as possible for our residents. Okay, anybody else? Jordan, no? I have a question. Okay. Is so, are you advocating for 125th Street? Because I thought that 151st was kind of a done deal. Do we have any shot at getting 125th Street? I I would say that that it may not necessarily be in the deal today, but um, Commissioner Heyman is on 100% in support of keeping it open. Um, I, you know, the reason you're right. The reason why 151st Street is in play is because the individuals that that own the project just east of it are paying for it. You know, I mean, they're paying for it, so it makes a lot of sense that that it's in play. Um, right now, there's no one in play in North Miami to be able to pay for it. But I'm I'm hoping that once we uh, start our ride sharing program, that's shared by our neighboring municipalities, they're going to see the demand to have it link up with the railway, and and that's my that's my hope. But but the way the way the item is structured right now. It's, it's leaving it open that it can be done in the future. It's not gonna be set in stone, but that's okay. a good question. But, and, and wouldn't we all wanna have a consensus? We kind of agree that we would all lean towards 125th as soon as possible. So if you wanna speak to that, how, do, how can we support you in your yeah. Thursday meeting? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be on it. I mean, anyone can be on it and, and speak, but um, you know, I think, I think the most part is, is letting people know that this is happening. And, and I think, I think the, to be honest, Kelly, I think the proof is in the pudding. I think once we do ride sharing and people really see the benefit of what I call free Uber, um, I, I think that, that the demand is going gonna, is gonna to push them to, to really seriously look at us. And I mean, the, the real thing that this council approved years ago was that they need to focus on stops that, that have the natural entrance way to the beaches. And the fact that we have our bridge, it would make sense that they, they need to take 123rd Street seriously. Well, what can we, what I think what Kelly's asking is we as a council, what can we do to support you to allow them to know that we are in support of this and this is what we want? Well, I mean, if we say collectively, we still, you know, we want it, we passed the resolution previously, but we still want it. I'll, t I'll tell them on Thursday and say the town of Bay Harbor Islands you know, supports this and, and wants to have a station as close as possible to our bridge for our residents and, and our neighboring municipalities. Sure. And, and also, by the way, support, support transportation uh, when this item comes up, probably at the next meeting. Gosh. In, in compliance with our, our previous understandings, I think we just have to, to affirmatively state that we are providing uh, Jordan, the authorization to speak on Bay Harbor's um, uh, on Bay Harbor's behalf, that we are in favor of the 123rd stop. So, is everybody in favor for Jordan representing us to, as the council? In does anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay, Jordan. Thanks. You're it. Thank Make you, sure you buddy. shave for that one. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm saving it for tomorrow. For <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, public comment. Alba? We have two. Okay. Uh, Can they please state their name and address for the record? Mrs. Newhut, if you can please take yourself off mute, I'd appreciate it. And please state your name and address for the record. Um, Francis Newhut, 1060 Hang Concourse. Why must both town citizens and residents be liable possibly spending thousands and thousands of dollars of their hot livelihood on hiring attorneys to defend themselves against alleged government wrongdoing when our Bay Harbor Island taxpayers' dollars are allegedly being used to protect and indemnify Bay Harbor Town Council, Code Section 2.2A and H, 
and all government officials, including our former town attorney, former town manager, former chief building inspector, and former chief engineer, etc. One, it has been virtually impossible to challenge town staff, the previous chief building inspector for alleged wrongdoing. Although the following had cost the owner thousands and thousands of dollars to demolish and reconstruct a new ADA compliant sidewalk, when previously the former chief building inspector approved this particular sidewalk where patrons were falling down and hurting themselves at the 106373 95th Street Shopping Center. It is also virtually impossible to challenge the Bay Harbor Town Council and or religious institutions when the alleged Bay Harbor Director of Code Compliance ignores visibility and safety issues with the following tax-free megachurch and council not allowing public hearings or discussion on the BBS movement, increasing of taxes, giving or taking of them of our municipal parking, right-of-ways and easements, and allegedly using a very common tactic of using the Rylupa law instead of listening to our consultant, Stanley Price, on 5 13 2016, in regards to zoning of religious land uses. One, conformity with our zoning ordinances, and two, follow the Bay Harbor Island governing standard in the areas where their property is located. Why must Bay Harbor Island possibly go bankrupt while Bell Harbor Shop seems to be allegedly benefiting with making millions and millions of dollars? and the ones who were very much involved with their lobbyists representing both Bell Harbor Shops and allegedly relocating this particular mega church to Bay Harbor Island and meeting individually with our council. Is it possible for our town government to be saved from this alleged mixed use scam from occurring in our business district by following our comprehensive plan and code of not allowing takeover of mega tax-free religious institutions starting with spot zoning of church by the sea on the ground floor of our business district. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who else do we have, Alba? Hold on just a minute. We have uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Ms. Kennedy, if you can state your name and address for the record, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, my name is Kathleen Kennedy. I'm at 9721 East Bay Harbor Drive. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome, I call her Ave Maria, because that's what Bay Harbor needs is an Ave Maria in our town. Welcome, Maria. I, I, I hear some great comments about you from the council. So um, I have a few questions. Um, regarding the Halloween, I don't think we should have a Halloween for the, our kids. I sent you all the numbers the other uh, yesterday or today, 143 right now in Bay Harbor Islands compared to Bay Har compared to Surfside 40 and Bay Harbor, uh, very low also in, in the 50s. So I think putting our kids out there uh, with, with this kind of uh, 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 exposure, uh, we don't need these numbers going up. We need to protect our children. And um, you answered my question about the park for the kids for the weekend and for the basketball court. Also, uh, I want to thank whoever was responsible for opening up the bridge and removing them barrels. That was disgusting. Every day I would send you guys pictures of our residents being stuck on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the bridge. So I really appreciate that. But the most important thing I think is the church by the sea, the drains. Um, I used to live at 9900, owned 9900, and when they were building the Kai, and they used to some, uh, hose their cement down the drains and it hardens. I, I, Ron, Ron got on it, he made them, he did a very good job. But once that gets hard, we're, we're getting flooding. And I spoke to, I think, two council people yesterday because Dr. Kushner's office called me, which uh, I couldn't, I was kind of shocked that uh, they had to take their shoes off. Uh, the, you can't, uh, you, uh, the, the trucks can't make deliveries because of the flooding, because the, the, the drains are all clogged up. I think Maria is on it, I heard, and I think that's been uh, settled. So, uh, you know, it, it's bad enough that, uh, 
you know, we, we have the king tides, but also now we have the church by the sea, uh, disrespecting our uh, rules and regulations in our town. Maria? Yes, we are on it. Okay. And thank you for all you're doing, by the way. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Um, Mayor Zilber. Mayor Zilber, please state, Linda, state your name and address for the record, please. You have to unmute, Linda. Okay, I am muted. Hi, my name is former Mayor Linda Zilber. I live at 1231 95th Street on the West Island, and I'd like to welcome Maria. And uh, I think I've lived here, I came here as a young girl, and I've lived here since... Uh, the island was seven years old. So if any, if there's anything I can help you with, with history, et cetera, I'd be more than happy to. Also, I would like to comment. Uh, originally, before I, I was on the Transportation Trust of Dade County, and before a bright line took over the trains, uh, both North Miami and Bay Harbor Islands was very much in tune with having a stop at 125th Street. And uh, I only hope that that goes through because all of the residents and all of the people that came to our transportation meetings were in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? That is it, Mayor. Okay. Let's move on to the consent agenda, except we are removing... Mayor, we have item number three for committee reports. Oh, I'm sorry, committee reports. Let's do committee reports. Josh. Before we do that, I just I just want to disclose. I, it's not something that's going to that rises to the level of recusal, but I just wanted to disclose that uh, one of the persons that uh, applied, uh, Ms. Dowsey, uh, and I had a had a, a uh, shared client years ago. I haven't spoken to her in years or anything like that, but I know that we both had the same client on a project, I think it was four or five years ago. Um, but again, I had no communication with, with her. I have no relationship with her whatsoever. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Um, so. For the committee, for the, this is for the reappointments uh, for, to the planning and zoning board members for the two year terms. And then there will be three members for this year only that will be appointed for a one year term. So I sent out to the entire council the ballots. If you guys want to see, you'd have to choose okay. numbers. Okay, I, I sent it to you, Alba. I just sent it to you. So, okay, so everybody, if you haven't sent your um, ballot, please do so to Alba. Give me a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Mayor, would you like me to read the agenda item? Um, we're just, uh, Abba, do we need to read the agenda item? It's, uh, if, if you can, Marie. It's, so for those of you, we are reappointing um, for one year, three people, correct, Abba, and the rest of them for our planning and zoning. And then next year we do it again, correct? No, right now we're reappointing all seven members. Okay, got and it. Three of those members, I'm going to take a, um, three of those members will be for one year term. The other four will be for two years. Okay. Okay. So Jordan, I still haven't had received yours. Isaac and Elizabeth. I just sent it. Did you get it? Me as well. I just sent mine too. I got yours, Jordan. All right, thank you. Uh, 
Um, Elizabeth, I need one more name. What's the total? Seven. A total of seven members. I have seven. No. Five, six, seven. You said reappoint all the old members. Nope, that's somebody else. That's not me. I, I, not I me. just sent. I just sent mine, Alba. Did you get it? Make sure, because I. I have sent. seven names on mine, Alba. Okay. Alba, I sent mine under two different emails. You'll see my. I see it. See, blame Josh. Josh is trying to confuse you. I <laughs> sent it all in one email. Who wants to vote twice, right, Josh? <laughs> Well, Josh, I, that? <laughs> Josh, I need one more name. No, you got it. Okay. This uh, now, now we know who did. I gave her seven. <laughs> I got it. I got your seven. You just split it between two emails. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Can yes. you ask if anybody, any of the non incumbent members of the uh, Planning and Zoning Board are in attendance? I, if there's anybody here, I'd like to just hear from them if that's possible. Um, I don't believe we have anybody. None of the people, none of the four folks that were applying attended this meeting? No. As a sidebar, um, the PBA attorney, Michael Braverman, looks like he's on. I just want to let him know we did pull that item. It's been deferred. So just as a sidebar, you may not want to stay on unless you want to stay on. Uh, by the way, just just for um, because Isaac mentioned it, I've spoken to all the new individuals that, that put their names up and and none of them actually knew about the meeting tonight. So I, I, I don't think it's because they chose not to, um, you know, to, to be on and they knew about it. Uh, none, none of the four individuals knew that we had a uh, that the you know, they didn't know the process. It wasn't explained to them. You know, it's not like they got an email and said, oh. It, you know, it's going to be at our next council meeting. You can attend. No one, no one was informed. So just so you know. Alba? Yes, I'm almost done. I got one more. <laughs> are we getting a consensus at least or are we going to have to do this again? We're almost there. That would be fun if we did it on the first try. We never do it on the first try. <laughs> Don't, don't don't bet your hard-earned money on it, okay? okay. <laughs> if you were a betting woman, Elizabeth. No, is, if you're a betting woman, this is a bad bet. Yeah, no, yes. I'm way too cheap to bet. Okay, so we have okay, so we have the highest votes we have Janet. Ampler, Alan Bepchik, Jed Frankel, Jerome Govkovich, Stephen Hurwitz, Wesley Keene, and Oscar Sklar. As those have been, they've received the highest votes pretty much. 
And, and they all received at least five. Yes, at least right. at least five votes. They have to be. They have to get five votes. Um, so I'm gonna put them all in a little to take a little vote now. So we have our seven. One, two, three. We no, we... I'm gonna choose who's gonna do the. So we have seven. Okay. Hold on, because now we gotta choose who's doing the one year term. Well, let's first go over again who was picked. Janet Adler, Alan, right? Alan Bebchik. Jed Frankel. Yes. Jerry Gafkovich. Yeah, Jerry Gafkovich, Steve Horowitz, Oscar Sklar. Wesley Keene. Awesome. Wesley. I'm going to do my little straw vote of the members that will do the one year term. So you want us to send it back to you? No, the straw no, vote is going to be oh, just a little bowl. It's random. Oh, okay. I'm going to pick okay. it up. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. So the three members that are doing one year is board member Keen. The second one is board member Sklar. And the third one. Is going to be board member Gapkovich. So those three uh, board members will be appointed for a one-year term. The other four will be for two-year terms. Okay, and you will notify them for the next um, meeting, yes. correct, Alba? That's correct. Okay. Let's, shall we move on, everybody? Anybody have any questions or anything else? Nope, okay. <clears throat> So now let's do consent agenda. We are going to remove six and seven, and then we will go back to those two. Okay. Do we have a motion for the consent agenda? We need a motion. Salver. Okay, second. Bobby Affey will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number six, let's go to six. Who, who pulled six? I did. Josh. Okay, Josh. Couple just minor touch-ups on it because I know this was a last minute thing to throw in. Let me just give you guys real quick background um, in case you haven't learned. Uh, we yeah, obviously we were successful previously because the original plans for the Metroplex had, as you well know, the landing pattern coming over Bay Harbor. Um, Bob and I were successful in getting uh, our representatives in DC to help out and the FAA, the FAA removed us from the landing patterns. What we didn't know at the time is that apparently Miami Beach was also lobbying and they were able to move the takeoff patterns uh, to a previously undisclosed uh, pattern that would now go up the intracoastal instead of over Miami Beach and come up over the, over the bay and then re-enter right around the Keystone Point area and go up North Miami and over Opelaka, Opelaka and, and further out west from there. Um, these new routes are affecting us greatly already, even though they're not, they're not officially in effect, they've already started uh, on a preliminary basis. So a lot of the neighboring towns, including uh, ours, have had, uh, and I, I already participated in a, uh, a um, uh, Zoom meeting with the commissioners um, for the county, because what we're trying to do is see if we can get the FAA to reopen uh, their, their plans, uh, because it is affecting all these other towns that never before have, have had to deal with flights directly over them. Uh, the other towns had put forth resolutions. We had not because we had thought we were completely successful. Now it appears we were only partially successful. So I've asked for a resolution here. Um, the only thing I would do here is I would change a couple of the words. Um, in the second, whereas, where it says, has imposed new flight patterns over the town. They're not all directly over the town. So I would say has imposed new flight patterns affecting the town. And then the rest is, essentially grammatical, uh, there are three commas that really aren't supposed to be there. Um, in the fourth, whereas after 24 hours a day, there shouldn't be a comma. 
uh, in the say, seventh whereas after the word adopted, uh, there should not be a comma, and then there should not be an adopt uh, comma after the adopted in number one. So it's really three grammatical things and changing the one word instead of over to affected. Okay, with those changes, do we have a okay? I 100% no, I, I agree with everything that Josh said. Um, it, it, let me tell you, it is a disaster what is going on right now. I mean, it is a disaster. I mean, I'm, you know, my luck, I'm working, you know, I'm working remotely from my house and it is a disaster. You can, it's, 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 I mean, this, the noise of one plane after another plane, after another plane, it's like, like a chain smoker that lights a cigarette, that's his old cigarette. So as soon as the, the noise from the first plane goes out, there's another plane right at its tail. It is worse than it's ever been, and I've lived here since 1993. Um, it is bad, and I, I'm hoping that Sally Heyman is uh, an incredibly loud voice in our efforts to get this changed and get it changed soon, because what is happening to this, this town and our neighboring towns is completely unacceptable, it's unusual, and it, 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 it's gotta change, and it's gotta change soon. I concur. It's been horrible. People are calling me. They go out in their backyard. They don't have any, you know, any peace and a quiet. Um, you know, it's very difficult. So anything, Josh, that you can work your magic on would be very much appreciated. Bob, I, I'm I not saying what I, I'm just going to move the resolution. resolution. Oh, okay. Resolution. I agree with the and comments if, that have been made. Okay. So it's already been changed and sent to uh, Council Person Fuller and the town manager. Okay, and if Thank I may, you. I also I also like I would like to be able to if you have anybody has any problem with it, um, I'd like to put something into the next newsletter as well, explaining what's going on to the residents, so that everybody understands Absolutely. what Miami Beach did. Yeah. Frank, have you got some of the resolution? Oh, yeah, I sent it to the town manager. Let me send it to you too. Apologize. So, Bob, Bob. Um, you you moved it. I need a second, please. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number seven. Oh my God. My dog. Hold on. Yeah, I pulled it. Okay. Um, I I pulled number seven. Can you hear me? All right. I pulled number seven because here, the sorry. agreement that we have is still in effect and we've there is there is an understanding that our um town and the school board which is a, a different subdivision have extended um the one-year extensions to our uh agreement with uh with an email and when i spoke to the assistant superintendent um about uh, about us getting our sro back which which they did do um, you know, it's just a matter of sending an email. So there's no need to have an actual uh, amendment to the agreement because the original agreement was a one-year agreement with two one-year extensions that we've been allowed to renew with a simple email. So I would just, I, I would say instead of passing this agreement, this MOU, just give the manager the direction to, to approve the extension of the last year of our, of our agreement and call it a day. So we had a but as you know, we've had issues. Right, we've had a three-year agreement, and this would be our second yes. of three years, correct? No, is this, this is our last year. So it's a one-year agreement with two one-year extensions, and this is our second extension. So this is the last last year for that agreement. But but as as we know, and Council Member or Vice Mayor Fuller knows very well. Um, we have to be very careful what we do in regards to agreements with the school board. So I would rather not have a new agreement or amendment. I'd rather just say, send an email and, you know, cause nothing in here, I don't believe there's anything in here that's not part of the original deal anyway. So in, in fact, okay. to be honest, I, I'd like, I'd like for them to pay us for year two, actually, that would be nice to have happen too. They still okay. owe us. I was going to ask about that. Did we receive our compensation? We're working on it. Yeah. I checked with Marlene. She said she was going to follow up again. Yeah, well, 
Well, well I like I like the money. Okay. Frank, did you want to say something? Yeah, one of the items that they wanted are our uh, our SRO training. Um, uh, there's certain mental health crisis intervention training and some other things as well that they wanted, which is a part of this. So we'll, we'll do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with us doing it. So well, we'll, we'll look, get on it. We'll do it. Yeah. Was it on the original? Wait, was it on the original con uh, uh, contract? No. No. Well, I, so that's I don't the thing, like Jordan. I don't. I'd like to know: Did the city of Miami Beach or North Bay Village or City of Miami sign? an amendment are we are we getting the same deal as them because i'm not aware of that i've never seen their their agreement i mean this is the first i've seen of this and when i spoke to the assistant superintendent there was never a discussion of an amendment to the agreement so if 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 why don't we do this why don't we find out if if, if all the other cities got agreements if it's an issue we can bring it back in two weeks we have another meeting at the end of the month anyway uh, what is the pleasure Stephanie, of council? Um, uh, you know, after our last meeting um, that we discussed this, I spoke to Irida Cartaya, and um, you know, she, after hearing the feelings of the council, which we made very, very clear to her, um, you know, she said that this, you know, she agreed that this, the uh, the agreement uh, that was currently in place, they they agreed to. Um, re-up it for another year. As a matter of fact, it might not even be a full year. It might only be through May, but um, you know, nothing, nothing really changed. And, and she also said to me that it would take nothing more than an email from our city manager to, uh, you know, to, to renew the, the deal for a final year, which what they agreed to renew. And I think, you know, maybe it should be discussed uh, at some later date as we approach the uh, end of the current school year. But I don't so think this, we, requires, this really I, doesn't require a lot. And I agree with Jordan that we shouldn't, you know, we don't even really have to pass this. Um, just, you know, make sure that, that Maria sends an email. So why don't, we, why don't we do this? Why don't we have Maria send an email? And if that works, congratulations. If it doesn't work, then we'll bring it. We have in two weeks a meeting. And if not, then at that time we can... If we have to, we will. How's that? Does I that agree. satisfy? Yeah. Can I also ask Thanks. that we do what Jordan asked? Like, are other schools in our feeder pattern that have their agreement in place, have they had to sign a new agreement or have they just allowed their agreements to continue through to their end? Well, what we're going to try to do, Elizabeth, is just sign it, send an email and be done with it. If that doesn't work, then we have to bring it back in two weeks. And at that time, I guess we will find out if, if yes. at that time. Correct, if we can find out if we have to bring it back, if we can find out if we're the only ones or if there are other you know, schools that have okay. it, that would be great. Okay, okay and, so. And, and by the way, let me just say this for the record, because I said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. A special, special thank you to Chief Lopez. Chief Lopez is the chief of police for the school board police department. And, and he was instrumental in helping to, to get our issue resolved. And, and I, I just have to say on the record, thank you to Chief Lopez. Uh, he's the one that, that made, helped make this happen for us and for our community. So thank you so much, Chief. Okay. We have someone that wishes to speak on this item. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Ms. Newhart, can you please state your full name and address? Ms. Newhart. Okay, I have it. Uh, my name is Frances Newhart, uh, 1060 Kang Concord. Um, okay, I'm getting a little confused here with uh, the MOU, the police officer. So we're still paying, the town of Bay Harbor is still paying for the police officer, is that correct? No, we're not paying. We have the school board who is reimbursing us for the pay of the person who is in our, in the school for one more year and then they take over. Correct, Jordan? I mean that, okay, because this is jeopardizing our interlocal agreement. I don't know if we still have one, but you know, we never really discussed um, uh, them breaching a contract of any kind. And you did mention that the basketball courts will be open. Um, 
you know, you have to be honest with these children because they're, they're playing now. The school is open. They see these kids playing um, in the basketball courts. They see them playing on the field. I know that we'll have the, our kids, uh, these programs now, soccer till 4.30, 5.30, but the, the gates do get locked. Our children aren't allowed in there and they are going into the a garage with their skateboards or, or into our proper, you know, the business district or they're on the streets again. Um, I thought this was going to be resolved with the interlocal agreement to allow these kids after school to have a place to go. I mean, they can't go to these little parks with children. Um, you're not really solving the problem for our, our town residents. This was, this interlocal agreement, um, and you were on the education committee, you were involved with, uh, Councilman Yaffe, on, on, on this interlocal agreement. I'd like to know what happened to it and um, why, why we, this police officer that they hired used to be our police officer. Are we going yeah. to not have police officers, uh, our police officers after the, uh, the, school, the school lets out? Are our police officers not going to watch the basketball courts, the tennis courts, and, and where they're needed? Well, thank you, Ms. Newhart. We will respond to that. First of all, um, you want, the, want me to answer that? Yes, please, Jordan. Okay, Just really briefly, as a result of the tragedy in Parkland and, and the mass killing at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, um, the state of Florida um, passed legislation uh, to require um, one of the options was to require an SRO in every single school and Miami-Dade County School Board um, chose the option to have a police officer in every single school. Money was allocated from the state of Florida to uh, Miami-Dade County public school system. Um, when, when I was president of League of Cities, I spearheaded the effort to have uh, a mutual agreement with our municipalities to provide municipal SROs where, um, where those cities that, that so desired to provide such service, whereas we would in, incur that, that position. So in other words, um, the SRO in, right now is um, Officer Brilliant. Officer Brilliant retired from the police department and was asked to come back after he retired to be our SRO. He is a Bay Harbor Islands police officer. He wears our uniform, it's his, he drives our car, it's our equipment, but at the end of the day, after we pay him, we are reimbursed for those um, for those costs. The first year, the costs were um, whatever difference of the costs were shared by Bay Harbor, Bow Harbor, and Surfside equally, and was only a couple thousand dollars for each city. Years two and years three, the school board um, is actually providing more than enough money to provide a hundred percent of the cost for Officer Brilliant. The agreement that we have is, is a one-year agreement with two one-year options. This is the final option of that agreement. That's the end of the conversation. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else, Alva? No, that, that is it, Mayor. Okay, thank you. So we are going to move on to our ordinance for first reading. So number 13, town manager, if you'd like to read it. Consideration or approval of an ordinance on first reading to increase the monthly charge for water service to $4.81 for 1,000 gallons and increase the minimum monthly service charges for each water reader to $22.38. An ordinance mm -hmm. of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands amending sections 20-5 and 20-6 of the Code of Bay Harbor Islands to increase the monthly charge of waste of water service to 4.81 per 1,000 gallons and to increase the minimum monthly service charges for each water meter to $22.38, providing for solubility, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Somebody wants to move it? I'll move it. Second? Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Because this is an ordinance, so let me do a poll vote. It doesn't say Polvo. Okay, go ahead. Council Member Yaffe? Four. Council Member Tricoche? Four. Council Member Solver? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Brewer? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. 
Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item number 14. Maria, if you could please read it. Consideration approval of an ordinance on first reading amending, amending section 20-9 of the town code, increasing the monthly base and flow charges for sewer, sewer service. An ordinance of the town of Bay Harbor Islands amending section 20-9 of the town code, increasing the monthly base and flow charges for sewer service, providing for penalties, providing for stability, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Move up. Who wants to move it? I'm all I'll move. Okay, second? Or I'll second, whatever. Okay, whole vote, Abba. Council Member Leonard? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Salver? Four. Council Member Tricoche? Four. Council Member Yaffe? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. Unanimous. Okay, we pulled number 15, so let's do number 16. Town Manager? Consideration and approval of contract award BHI-206, remote monitoring of main sanitary lift station, SCADA, the champion controls in the amount of $151,441 for the design, implementation, installation of the SCADA system. Okay, somebody move it. I'll move it. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Alba. Council Member Yaffe? Four. Council Member Chicoche? Four. Council Member Salver? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. Amen. Okay. Number 18, please. Consideration, uh, no, is it 18 or 17? 17. 17. 17. Consideration approval of supplemental agreement. Number one, for SEI services by KCI Technologies, Inc. for additional funding in the amount of $33,480 to provide continuity to complete inspection of the work and close out all documentation necessary to certify BC-154 broad causeway corridor enhancements. Okay, who will move it? I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So, um, this relates back to the you know the bridge between the east and the west island and that railing system. Um, it was my understanding, I think, from I think it was Marlene who advised me that one of our consultants um, measured something wrong, and you know they had to go back and make new new parts so that the railing system would fit um, in the space provided. So, if that is in fact correct. I would like that consultant to be held responsible for um, any costs involved, um, which may be included in these additional fees, which we are about to award to um, KCI. I, I agree. I was told the same, that, that there was that mistake that was made. And I agree with you because I don't think the taxpayer should pay for this. It's not right. a mistake that, we, that was done by our staff. Agreed. Wouldn't the consultant have insurance errors and omissions perhaps to cover that? Well, you know, they've been on retainer for uh, with us for many years, and I'm sure we could uh, get that resolved with the assistance of the town attorney if necessary. Good idea. I support that, Bob. So do I. Let's try to get the money from either the insurance or from, what do you think, Frank? So I have a meeting tomorrow, my weekly meeting with the town manager, and we'll be more than happy to discuss that and, and develop a strategy. So let's pull it for right now. And well, we can go ahead and well, we, we, we can vote on it. This is, well, we, yeah, this need is still, we, we need to do the work. I just want a portion of it to be reimbursed to the town because of right. the consultant's error. So do, so do you want to reword it? Because it's oh, no, I just I, I I'm OK with approving this expenditure. We need to approve this expenditure in order to finish the project, okay. but we we will have to determine what portion of this expenditure, because if you look at um, the fourth uh, bullet point there, it's, you know, there's a revised detail summary to connect the LED lighting system and maybe a portion of these fees are related to that design defect. Um, so I'll leave it to the manager and the attorney to work that out. I just want to make it clear that we need to go back to that consultant and obtain 
reimbursement for any expenses, which it's mistake caused, not to mention the fact that initially we wanted to have, you know, this railing project completed by the time school started. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we have no end date at this point. Right. I think we should add in any additional police costs that we have associated with the delays. I mean, there's, there's, we've, we've, like, we've put out quite a bit of money based on this mistake. I agree with you, Elizabeth. Okay, so Frank. Perhaps the motion then could be to approve uh, an amount up to $33,480 to allow us to have flexibility with regard to any claims that the town may have. Well, no, I think we have to pay the provider. We have to pay KCI to complete right. the work. We just got to go after the consultant now for whatever damages we have that are associated to this. I agree. Okay. So yeah, who's going to move it? I'm moving. I'll move it. Okay, second. 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 Okay. Abba. Council member Yaffe. Um, Alba, I'm sorry. It looks like maybe Doug Armstrong wanted to say something. I what? see. Him Let me, yes, he does want to speak. Let me just allow him. Hi, Doug. Doug, if you could unmute yourself and state your full name. Doug. Listen, I'm usually the one who has technical difficulties. Okay. There's always at least one. I have okay. to tell you. I'll, fo I'll follow up with Doug and we'll okay. come out with the attorney tomorrow. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So let's go, Alba. Okay. Council Member Yaffe? Four. Council Member Tricoche? Four. Council Member Salver? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Mayor Bruder. Four. Unanimous. Okay, number 18. Consideration of approval of a two year extension of contract BHI 183 for landscape and irrigation maintenance with Bright View Landscape Services. Bob. Um, I've advised Maria um, that I'm opposed to this um, for the following reasons. I mean, Brightview has been with us for a good number of years before Brightview purchased its predecessor. The predecessor company was providing our landscaping services. I remember, I think, um, after community enhancements many years ago, um, I, I was one of the, I don't know if I was the one or one of the ones who suggested that we outsource our, our landscaping services instead of doing it in-house. And we initially hired one company and then we hired a second company, which I believe later became Brightview. And I think that their um, services have been substandard for a number of years. I remember years ago meeting with Ron Wasson, who was then the town manager and the, uh, I guess the supervisor from either Brightview or its predecessor at you know, one of the um, passive parks and so forth and just talking about the, the quality of the work. So I don't wanna belabor it, but I'm not in favor of two years. Marie and I talked about, I mean, I understand that there's a termination provision. We could terminate this anytime, but I would might consider a year, but I'd like to get an RFP out there. Um, you know, and Maria's new, Maria should have the opportunity to evaluate their service. I, I just, I'm, as a matter of principle, don't want to let them know that we're happy with their services and willing to um, re-up for two years. That's my feeling about it. Okay. Stephanie, yes, sure. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Bob. The last company, the former company was Brinkman. So, you know, right. So uh, I'm not very happy with their services and I had the same conversation with the manager. So I know uh, two years would be unacceptable. One year is still a long time. Um, and we discussed her having the ability to, you know, work with them. I wonder if six months would be uh, an alternative and enough time. That would be my suggestion. I, I would go with a year if it had to be, but I, I totally agree with putting it out again for an RFP. Okay, Mar Maria, what do you think? Next month is okay, a year would be, I just didn't want it right away because we're swamped with so much right now on our plates. 
So is there any way, Frank, that we can at any time, let's say six months from now, we're unhappy, can we sort of cancel them or when we can start looking, Kelly, after six months, if we're not happy, it'll take us a month or two to actually, you know. Listen, you could put the RFP out now and maybe that would get them motivated or if you don't want to and you just want to see how they yeah. act, you know, naturally. No, you I think they'd have a problem with that. I think if you start putting, if you if you accept a contract and then immediately start going for an RFP, you're going to have a problem. But if you don't mind me saying, I had spoke to Maria about this because one of the issues here is I wasn't happy with the length of the time either, but she and I went through and confirmed that there is a, a termination clause at will. We can do it at any point. We can terminate this thing. So the length of time is really somewhat irrelevant. If we're not, and if we're not comfortable with their service, that's it. Um, you know, we can say tomorrow we don't like it. So I think we can take it at time. I, I personally think I'm not happy with the service either, but I think we can continue right now. Let Maria deal with other items right now. And then a couple months from now, if we terminate the contract and then put it out for our, then we're, we're fine. So why don't we do this? Why don't we accept the contract for a year with the understanding at six months, we will review this again, see where we're at. And since we can at any time, release them or we can be released from our contract at that time we can make a decision and giving also Maria a little chance to breathe and maybe Doug work with them and maybe they'll understand how unhappy we are. I'd really that like to get a, a, an RFP out somewhere between three to six months from now. I mean I would get it out tomorrow if Maria and the team felt like they could do it but I, I'd like to get it out somewhere between the next three to six months so that we can start moving forward on this. I mean unfortunately the climate right now is such that I think that there are a number of organizations that would value a partnership with Fall River Islands. And I think that we, uh, that's something that can be advantageous to us. And unfortunately, if our current provider is not engaged in providing us the level of service, I think that we've increased options at minimum for the short term. And I'd like to exercise those. So how about if we give in three months, giving Maria an opportunity opportunity Elizabeth and we can revisit it giving her an opportunity with everything else that's really on her plate and having Doug actually have a conversation with them does that suit you in three months then we would send it out giving her an opportunity to kind of like settle in if Maria feels like that's a reasonable amount of time I think that that would be great Maria so do you want to revisit months, it in three months we'll give you an update okay is that work for you Elizabeth Okay. We Anybody have, else? We have someone that wishes to do public comment. Okay. Ms. Kennedy, if you could Ms. Please. Kennedy, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, Kathleen Kennedy, 9180 West Fair Harbor Drive. I couldn't agree with you more, Bob and uh, Kelly. Uh, as someone who walks this island all around, I know you, I know you do, Bob. They do a horrible job. A lot of times I'm out there telling them about the outlets. You know, you forgot this, you forgot that. There's coconuts up there. Why don't you just bring them down? They just ignore you. I totally agree that we should get somebody else. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Kennedy. Anybody else, Alva? No, no more public comment. Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to accept the contract for one year with an understanding in, in two to three months, Maria will come back with us, let us know her evaluation, and then we can revisit it again. Is that acceptable to the council? Yes? Yes. So we have a motion on that, Mayor. So I make a motion that we accept the one-year contract with our town manager and the council reviewing it within two to three months to see where we are with this company. In the meantime, Doug will act, you know, will um, continue engaging with them. And uh, that's it. Okay. I need a second. Second. Thank you, Kelly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. Number um, 19. This Discussion on possible action regarding the process to select and or appoint a town attorney. Okay. So how are we going to do these ladies and gentlemen? How would you, Josh? 
I, I'm personally not in favor of making a selection tonight. Um, the, what I wanted to bring mm -hmm. up is I, I'd like to, we have a shade meeting now set for next week. Um, I'd like to make sure we get through the shade meeting and not have any problem um, beforehand with either, you know, depending on who's selected, who's not selected. Um, I just think at this point, we've got the materials. I have no problem having a discussion as far as what we like and don't like right now, but selection, I don't think we're ready for. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I agree with that. And I, I had mentioned that to the manager as well. Um, you know, if we're going to make a change in the town attorney, I think it's important to the council to have the opportunity, you know, whether we want to interview all the firms or, you know, or narrow it down. Sorry. That's a process we have to discuss, but I certainly would not be in favor of working with somebody that I haven't met and had the opportunity um, to speak with. I think it's important, you know, for any sub substantial hiring um, that we have, that the council have the opportunity, um, you know, particularly where we are the, the entity that appoints as opposed to the manager um, or, you know, to have those interviews. So that's my thought process. So do you want to look at all of the narrow it down like we did for the town manager and then have- no, I have no issue narrowing it down. I'm just saying that if we are not going to continue with Frank and John that um, or, or we're not, we're not certain. I don't want to say we're not, um, you know, and I'm in, I, I'm in favor of Frank and John being one of the, the firms that we would continue to have discussions with. But, um, if there is an, an, the desire on the part of other council members to interview other firms, yes, I think we should narrow it down and then do the interviews. Okay. Kelly. Well, um, I'm glad that we're not, we're all, in favor of not going forward tonight. I'm not ready just, you know, by these resumes. Some of the firms we're very familiar with, they're around town. Um, obviously we've had our interaction with Frank and his firm. And then there are a few that quite frankly, I just really don't know anything about except on paper. And uh, I started asking around and I discovered that some places like in North Miami, for example, with their last search, they put together a blue ribbon panel each council member appointed someone, usually an attorney with either local knowledge or municipal background. And then they would do an interview process and just give us some non-binding feedback. They would kind of, you know, like do, do a first step for us and help boil it down and give some suggestions. So I would find that very helpful. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I, I don't mind not making a decision tonight, but to, to be honest, um, you know, if, if the council wants to interview people, I think we should make the decision tonight about the process of, of perhaps maybe interviewing the principal of each of the firms um, so we get an understanding of, of um, how they work. Um, me personally, um, you know, six out of seven firms, I, I'm pretty aware of, of, of their work and uh, and the principles of, of their firms. Uh, there's only one firm that I, I don't know any of the principles. Um, I can tell you out of the seven firms, three of them we currently use. We, we actually currently use three out of the seven firms right now. So, you know, I, I think we're, we're pretty familiar of who these individuals are. Um, you know, and certainly uh, we, we've seen some of these firms time and time again. So I, I'd like, if we're going to do interviews, I'd like to start that process and, and get it going and not, and not like wait and next thing you know, we're six months into this. Anybody else? Josh, Isaac? Like I said, I'd rather not choose tonight, but just I think we can. But what, we how can would you forward. like the process to go? Would you, do you want to narrow it down? Do you want to do what Kelly said and have outside people first, you know, interview them and narrow it down? How would you all like to handle the I picking? I don't think we have to have outside personnel um, interview. I think we can figure out a lot for ourselves. There's a lot of information here. Um, and I don't want to drag this out longer than need to than it need be. Um, at the same time, I think this is more, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to get a ballot email to us, uh, you know, a little while before a meeting and say, submit it. I think we have to have a full on discussion um, amongst all ourselves because Look, I've looked at the I've looked at these. There are positives and negatives to every single one of the applicants, and I think we would all benefit from each other's uh, from having a conversation of each other's thoughts, which we can only do obviously in a meeting. So 
I think we can we can put on the uh, next gender or we can have it, you know, we're talking about a next meeting in 17 days or less 15 days, um, or if you want a special meeting, so be it. But I think we all have to discuss it amongst ourselves, but I just don't want to do it before the shape meeting. I think, yeah, um, Stephanie, I think this is worthy of having a special meeting. I agree that it might be a good idea to meet uh, a representative in each, in, you know, for, you know, from each each of the firms that submitted their resumes. And I agree with the comments that were made that the, um, you know, the, uh, the firms that responded, they're clearly, you know, clearly they're all qualified, experienced. And like Jordan said, we know probably six out of seven and we've worked with, you know, three or four of them. Um, so I, I think this type of item is worthy of a special meeting. And, you know, I for one would be willing to have a special meeting um, okay. invite, invite all the applicants to the meeting and discuss at the meeting and then perhaps, you know, come back and then at a public, you know, at our, at our monthly meeting, maybe make the final decision at that point. So you want to have a special, invite the, the representative of each law firm to a special meeting in which we can have an open conversation so that we can hear what they need to say and then come back to our regular meeting and maybe make a decision then, correct? Right, right. Okay, is everybody in agreement with oh, that? Stephanie, I just want to be clear yes. that each of the firms has designated a county attorney. You know, some of them have 10 or six or eight people who may you know who will be available to us, depending on whether it's a labor matter or litigation matter or lease matter and so forth. But one person has been designated as the proposed town attorney. So if we're going to interview those those individuals or have them attend a meeting, those are the individuals who I would like to attend the meeting or to interview. Okay. Not just representative of the right. firm. Okay. Right. I, so, I agree. I agree. Okay. So um, I will have Alba reach out to all of you to see which is the date certain for us to have this meeting. And then I will ask Maria and Alba to reach out to the different law firms. I know Frank, you'll be there um to make sure and facilitate it for us and ask you know and give them the date uh once you get the you pull the council uh for that meeting okay everybody okay with that fine fine okay number 20. we have public comment on this oh i'm sorry go ahead uh mrs newhud miss newha please state your name and address for the record my name is Frances Newha, and I'm at 1060 King Congress. Uh, thank you for delaying the choosing of the attorney. Um, a lot of people are still not familiar with, they mention the firm, but they don't mention directly what attorneys are coming out of that firm to represent our town. Um, it would be nice if you would choose, or at least Alva send us that as well. She sent the firm, but some of these are not uh, mentioned. The other thing is, um, we have some history with some of these attorneys. Uh, I think this needs to be considered when you're choosing, uh, and some of them are not good. Uh, the other thing is, uh, on some of the costs to the town, because we hired them, uh, there was prices of how much we paid them for, I think, in a two-year span, and some of those are incorrect. Um, I think that needs to be corrected. I think we paid them more. And again, um, we have even one attorney who was part of uh, writing our charter and ordinance, you know, the charter. So, um, you know, these are questions that, you know, our public, our citizens should know about. So um, I think we should have the public involved. I, mean, I know you like to talk or, or make your own decisions by yourselves, but I think we need all the information possible on each individual that we are choosing, what they have done in our town so far, and what's going on here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alba? Yes, uh, we have one more. Um, okay. Mrs. Kennedy. Ms. Kennedy, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, my, Kathleen Kennedy, 9721 East Bay Harbor Drive. 9180 West Bay Harbor Drive, excuse me. Uh, this is the first time, I, you know, I'm never afraid to speak my piece, but I think that we need Geller as our attorney. 
it's not who you know, or it's not what you know. And if 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 uh, Josh wants his FAA approved, or Isaac wants doesn't want to hear the noise, it's not. It's it's Geller's the guy who is a, a representative. He he know he's connected, and I think that he should be cons a serious consideration. He's got class. He reminds me of my good friend Craig Sherman, who always was a polite, a gentleman. The ones we have now are, are disrespectful. And uh, I think it's time for, the, for a new slate. And I highly recommend State Representative Geller as our next town attorney. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, Tava? I just have one request. When we're asking them for information. I'd like to know from the attorneys, and it's something I talked to the manager about. I'd like to know if they represent any other local communities that abut us. I think that that's important for us to understand. Oh, that's a great idea. That's great. Yes, that's very important. Okay, Abba, anybody else? We don't have any more public comment, Mayor. Okay, so Abba, you know what we need to do, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you so much. Number 20. Okay, um, discussion requested by Council Member Leonard regarding the timeline and, and process for selected town clerk. Yeah, um, I mean, this is pretty easy. Um, we already went through the process for the manager. We're, in, we're currently in the process for the attorney. And now we need to have a process for the clerk. Uh, I, I think probably the best thing to do is to open it up and have anyone that wants to apply, apply. And we can have it closed. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can get resumes in and probably by the next meeting, we can uh, we can start the start the process on the clerk. Um, we have a couple months until Marlene uh, will be leaving, and she's uh, already offered in her resignation letter that um, that no matter what, whether she's still here, whether she's already gone, she'll help with a smooth transition, and I and I believe she will. Um, so I, I you know there's a clerks association. Uh, we can go through the league. Um, I like to just open it up and and have people start start applying. Elizabeth. You know? So um, I, first, I just want to say that it's really important that Alba understands that my position has nothing to do with her personally. I think you're lovely. I agree with Jordan. I think that we have a responsibility to our constituency uh, to make sure that we are doing right by them. And I think if anything, our history, especially over the last couple of years, has shown that, you know, putting out job postings and, and RFPs is a great way, you know, to represent that we're doing right by them. Um, obviously, I would hope that Alba would apply for the position under those circumstances, but I absolutely agree that we need to treat this as such, um, put out a job posting and reach out, you know, to make sure that we are doing our due diligence and in, in making a decision of who our next clerk is going to be. Um, hey, Stephanie, yes. uh, uh, I have a question for Frank and then a comment. Uh, Frank, do we have to put this job out? Um, can we fill it internally without advertising it? You could appoint uh, Alba uh, as the uh, town clerk uh, at any time. Uh, once you, uh, if you choose to put it out to the public, then it has to be pursuant to an RFQ. Right. Okay. So that being said, um, you know, it would be my recommendation that, you know, in, in light of the you know, brand new manager, um, a search that we're doing for the lawyer. Uh, I think just for the sake of stability of the town, you know, I, I think we, I recommend that we do not go out for a search for a new town clerk. I, I think we have a, you know, a wonderful clerk right under our nose. Um, you know, she served us as an interim clerk. Uh, and I, I think um, it would probably be counterintuitive and delays um, to, to go out and do a full-blown search for a clerk when we have a perfectly competent clerk that is familiar with everything that goes on in the town. So I would recommend that we don't, you know, pile on a new search for a, a new individual and just hire, um, hire Alba as our clerk. Josh? Yeah, I, I'm, I agree with Isaac. I mean, the fact is, you know, Alba has given us absolutely no reason to look elsewhere. I think her work to date has been extraordinary. 
Um, I think there is a certain amount of institutional knowledge that is necessary in any organization. And God knows we've lost and we're going to continue losing quite a bit of that at this point. Um, I don't see, especially right now, the need to spend time, money, uh, effort on something that we've already got. Uh, so yeah, this is not a you know this is not a lifetime appointment. Um, this is a scenario where you know I believe Abba is the right person. I think we take we move forward that way. If we're, for whatever reason everybody feels otherwise in the future, that a change can be made. But right now, there's no reason uh, to remove Abba or to go ahead and, and put this out for bid. Okay, Bob. I, I agree completely um, with Josh and Isaac. Um, Alba has, has you know, done a great job. Um, she's been here a good number of years. She has learned everything there is to know almost about the town of Bay Harbor Islands. And I do think that the institutional knowledge um, is important. I know that you know, there are many occasions where I had questions or you know, looking for information from the past. And, you know, Marlene was a great source of information. Um, and you know, because of her the length of her tenure with the town and the institutional knowledge which she had, um, I think she was very helpful to all of us. Um, you know, the managers, the administration, council members, and I think um, Alba has picked up a lot of that. And uh, so I, I would support appointing Alba and not going out for um, an artist at this time. Um, I agree with the three gentlemen wholeheartedly. And uh, I, I think it comforts me greatly that Marlene, with her 22 years, really went out of her way to train and mentor Alba. Um, Alba is not only intelligent and doing a good job, but you've probably all noticed she's extremely professional. She doesn't get personal. She comes to work. She does her job. She doesn't get involved in any politics. And I, I really like that. She also works late. And if there's something that needs to get done, we might get a call or an email, whether it's six or seven o'clock on a regular day, she attends meetings. And I know she has a family, but she's juggling all of that. And you would never know it. You would think she's someone with nothing else to do because she's always there. And uh, it would actually be my pleasure to make a motion that we appoint Alba Chang as town clerk. Yeah, I'd, I'd, Jordan. I'd like to speak about that. Yeah, I, with all due respect, I, 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 to be honest, I'm one. I'm, I, I know that our current clerk Marlene has extensively lobbied each of the council members, and I respect the fact that she's been with the town for 22 years. But this is the most untransparent uh, backroom deal that I've ever seen in my ten years on this council. Um, to not even have a I, process. I made a motion, Mary. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, then I have the right to speak. But I, have, I made a motion. and Okay. Uh, I had uh, the floor when I made the motion. I'll second okay. it for the Thank record. You. Good, you have a motion a second. We're going to discuss. Yes, that's how so, it's done. So, Thanks, Kelly. so, like I said, this is not transparent. And to be honest, as someone, the only person on this council that has worked in government in the executive positions, including I've been a city clerk, um, I, I have some reservations. And unfortunately, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna say in a public meeting and, and, and start listing all the things that I have issues with, but to be quite honest, when it comes to issues like public records and notifying the council of, of things that are important, um, to be honest, you know, it's been, it's been negligent and it hasn't happened. And with all due respect to the last, you know, couple months we have um, had this, th this town has been in disarray for the last couple months. I, I think we all acknowledge that and accept it. But, but, that's, just not because, Alba, but that's not because of just Alba. We've had tremendous, no, we, we but can't put that out shoulders. What I'm saying is that just because we've had some issues and now that we're in cleaning up our house in, in regards to a new uh, manager and put out for for a permanent attorney doesn't mean that that we should just, you know, get rid of our responsibility and say we're going to just keep who we have there without looking at potentially anyone else that may want to apply. But but I wouldn't be saying this if I if I believed that Alba was the best selection. I, I will say on the record, I I, I disagree. I don't think she's the right person for the job. And I, I think she's a great employee, but 
there are specific instances where I've seen where I, I don't believe she, she I, I believe there's going to be problems. We've had problems recently and that we're going to continue to have problems because of it. And I would ask well, my council but, members to at least open right, it up. Right, Jordan, but you, but you do realize that come April, you know, there is, we, we do this again. So we're talking a six months. I think we're losing you, Stephanie. To, you know, that it's six months, you know, we, we will have to reappoint whoever we have. So it's not, you know, again, I don't think that we can put everything on, on Alba's um, shoulders of what has gone on. I mean, we've had a clerk who is retiring, who is our town manager. It has been a very stressful, um, convoluted issue. Um, so I think that, Jordan, maybe you should maybe think about it. Out. Okay, Bob. I disagree with Jordan in terms of lack of transparency. Um, I think that you know Marlene um, and Alba worked together for a good number of years. I trust Marlene implicitly. Um, I think she's been an excellent uh, you know executive employee in, in the town of Bay Harbor Islands for almost 22 years now. By the time she um, retires, and I appreciate the fact that she has. Um, expressed confidence in Alba's abilities. I trust her enough to be honest with me to say that if she didn't think that Alba was the right person, for whatever reason, that, that she would do so. And I don't think that there's anything wrong or untransparent about the incumbent, you know, clerk as she's getting ready to retire. And she put it, you know, out for all of us in her resignation letter, um, her recommendation. So, um, you know, if anybody has issues, um, you know, with Alba and, you know, that, that's fine, you know, and those are, those are matters that can be discussed, but, um, you know, but I don't think there's a, a lack of transparency here. And I think that, um, you know, there has been a lot of change, um, continuity, at least for the next six months or so, I think is very important to us and to the town and to the residents of the town. And as Stephanie said, you know, we make an annual appointment of the town attorney and end of the um, end of the town clerk um, and deputy town clerk and deputy town attorney and so forth. So, you know, we can see how this goes um, for the next month, you know, six months or so. But, you know, I've had the experience for the last several months of working as the interim town clerk. And um, I'm fully satisfied with, you know, what she did during that period of time. So, thank you. Gosh. It, um, I think we have to deal with a procedural thing here. We have a clerk. Um, look, I'm in favor of Alba, um, and I want her to become our next clerk. But you know, Marlene is clerk until February 22nd, so we are not appointing. I don't know why there was a motion for it. There is no appointment of a new clerk at this moment. What we have, because otherwise you're effectively terminating Marlene, which is not, I think, the intent here. So what I think we need to understand is the item that's on the agenda is discussion. It does not say discussion and possible action. Um, I'm going to continue to support Alba as our next town clerk, but I think what we need to do is if you want to put something on the next agenda where there says possible in possible action or a motion to appoint her as of February 23rd, 2021, that's fine with me. I just don't think you can appoint her tonight for a position that's already filled. Kelly. Okay. That was, that was my understanding when I, I made my motion that would, it would be, you know, as of the 23rd. So I'll entertain, you know, the legality of that. If not, I will just withdraw my motion and then I will make it again if I can't make it right now. But I'd like to address um, some of the accusations that Jordan lobbed at us that uh, first of all, that we were lobbied by Marlene and the lack of transparency. And that could not be any further off base. It, everything that we've discussed, just like Bob said, you know, I'm not going to go into it for too much longer, but it was extremely transparent. And, uh, you know, Jordan, you, you cited your expertise as clerk, but how long were you clerk? Nine months. And please, if you want transparency, when we, if we do decide to put it out and some very close personal friends of yours decide to put in, I think you're going to need to disclose that, but it is an annual appointment and I will maintain my strong support for Alba Chang as clerk. And if that has to wait till next meeting, then so be it. So Frank, please. 
Thank you. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. No, she made some accusations. And you know what? First of all, I have no, I, I have no friends or associates are, that have expressed an interest in applying for this job. Uh, Marlene That's asked me, enough. and she accused me that I did have someone I knew that wanted to apply, and I told her emphatically no. And she did lobby me, and she told me she was going to lobby every member of this council. So I'm not speaking out of any idea. I'm speaking out of a matter of what our current clerk told me. Okay. Well, okay. First of all, just for myself, I haven't spoke to Marlene, so I just want to put that out there, but it doesn't matter. What I want to know from Frank is a little different. Is there any way Marlene is taking a tremendous amount of time off if there's any way... If we were, if we had gone out and found somebody, then we would have made that person wait till February. We would not have done that. We would have appointed them and moved Marlene. I get, can we do that? Can we flip flop them? Because the one who's really here the whole time right now is Alba. Marlene is, you know, can still be working, but can we do that? Do you okay, know so, so let me talk about what's here here on the agenda, then let me circle back to answer your question, if that's okay. So the discussion item is, is about a timeline and process to select a town clerk. And I believe that the consensus is the timeline and process to select the town clerk is that we're what, that when the present town clerk is no longer the clerk, it's the council's desire that Alba take her place. With regard to the present clerk as Marlene, as you know, under the charter, she serves at the discretion of and the pleasure, just like I do, of the town council. If you wanted to, at a duly noticed meeting, you could uh, make a motion to um, uh, to no longer have her be the clerk and see whether or not she would accept the uh, assistant clerk position. I'm not saying you should or otherwise, but that's the process for doing that. Right. In, in other well, words, we have a problem. Can I ask the town manager something? Is there anything, I'm sorry, Kelly, is there anything <laughs> that Alba, if Mar, that Alba needs to do or access to that she does not have because she's not the town clerk? So, in other words, I mean, I'm not looking for Marlene to go away, but Marlene has a modification time. And I. Alice I don't know. Job as a backup. Uh, uh, is there something? I don't know. And I believe she's able to get the job done as clerk right now. As Marlene is taking a lot of vacation time, and Alba has been filling in to get the work get the work done. Is that correct, okay. Alba? That is correct. And, and Mayor, if I may, ha I do have a few comments to say. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to to the council. I'm humbled by your support. Um, and, and Jordan, if at any time you want to sit down and have that conversation, I'll be more than happy to have it. But I, I, I will say that Marlene has been a mentor to me and transparency has been, it's like been written on a wall somewhere um, with regards to public records. I mean, I, I could not be more transparent than what I'm already, you know, what I do every day. Every day I, I answer a public records request. Um, what you might be referring to is that I might not always um, contact the council when a records request come in. Um, the law, the, there's nothing on the law that says that I have to uh, contact you or, or, or the council. So um, I'm doing everything by the law and as transparent as I can. So uh, may I humble by everybody's support and thank you. So may I make a suggestion, Jordan and Alba, that maybe you... Um, sit down together and you can have a conversation at this point and maybe discuss what are some of the points since you're a clerk, you are a clerk, Jordan, and she is a clerk, and maybe there's some finer points that you can help her with. Um, Kelly. Um, in that case, would it, I'm asking, um, Frank, would it be appropriate if I amend my motion to say effective February 23rd? And then in the meantime, the clerk's office will work it out because I'm sure Marlene will be coming in and I would like to recognize her that she still is our clerk until she retires. And I think how they would work it out 
is that whenever Marlene is on vacation or absent or not available for a meeting, then uh, Alba steps in. That's what a deputy clerk does. So she's our clerk tonight. She's acting clerk. But then when Marlene's there, you know, that day she's deputy clerk. Is that appropriate? So I think this is just a discussion item. You don't have as a possible action. I think okay. you can certainly, uh, you can certainly, the consensus is there. You can certainly do that at the next meeting or even the meeting okay. we're having in two weeks. Okay. Just put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Exactly. And but for possible action. That's that's right. what I was going to say. Okay. You, have, you have my support okay. if you put it to the 30th. That's so fine. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I guess we are moving to adjourn. Mayor, we do have public comment. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's fine. Mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Linda Zilber. Uh, yes. Uh, as a former mayor and as a citizen, I would like to say Alba has been very helpful to me and I want to thank her and I hope she will be our next clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Ms. Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, 9180 West Fair Harbor Drive. I highly, highly recommend Alba Chain as our next town clerk. I tell you, all of us are not easy. All of us are not easy to deal with, but she handles all of us in a very professional manner. She's always given out the uh, requests when asked for. The only thing I, I, I would re re recommend is that we, uh, we don't use fancy tech words for the seniors, like uh, everything is in your uh, Dropbox, because we don't know what Dropboxes are. So just FYI on that, but, but, but Alba, you're a terrific, terrific professional. And I highly recommend you. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Thank okay. You. Anybody else, Alva? Um, Mrs. Newhut. Mrs. Newhut. Hi, I'm Frances Newhut. I agree with the other three. I think that Alva is terrific. will make a very good town clerk. The only problem I'm having is that um, <laughs> it appears that the town clerk, the other town clerk, is a her because I keep on getting uh, mistakes. In other words, just recently, you know, silly things like on the October agenda wasn't on uh, the bulletin board. The DRC meeting was on Thursday. Nobody knew about it. It's not on. The, uh, and, and this goes on and on. But these are these are really things that happened when the town clerk Marlene was in charge. Alba, before she was the town clerk, we never had these problems. Now she's following in the footsteps of the previous town clerk. And I don't know if it's her doing it or the town clerk, but I think we should only have one town clerk and we should have uh, Marlene uh, retire or whatever it is she has to do, take her sick time, but I don't think those two should be together. I think that uh, Alba is very capable by her side, by herself, and she doesn't need someone giving her bad habits. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so move to adjourn. Second. Okay, thank you everybody. Alba will be reaching out to you for the meeting and the special meeting on the attorney. Have a good okay. evening. Have a good, good night. Bye everybody. Bye.